Have you ever had a pot noodle? You forced a Bombay bad boy down my throat on tour. Yeah. But other than that, I haven't. We still need to pay him. <laughs> Hello and welcome to our Friday episode. This is where we can see how much extra content we can squeeze into your week. It's random things that have been sent in, extra bits from our week and how our advice went down with you, our G and Divas. Um, now, a lot of you have commented and DM'd us about my Hogwarts legacy character, yes. um, Sean Mendes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of people seem to think he looks a bit like you, Jordan. See, this, this is a bit weird. I'm not going to lie. He doesn't and, have a beard. And I'm looking at him here. He, 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 he's got he, curly brown hair. He's got curly brown hair, but no beard. And he doesn't have the face. Does Sean Mendes have curly brown hair? He's got black hair, hasn't he? Yeah, it's and it's got it's got a natural curl. Well, like yours, it's got a natural curl. It's I've just got a, a natural. No, no, curl. no. Sorry, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't. No, I'm a natural I, curl. I beg your pardon. His is is what I meant is his is less less curly than yours. Yeah, but he's got a wave. Let's put it that way. So loads of people say to me, "Your Mikey included." Every time I bloody see him, I love your girls. I love your girls, he says. Now, I I um, dry my curls out, but most people think I like put mousse in it and stuff. And Do curl, you not? No, and, and spray salt. Have you ever put... I don't like my hair curly. I like it straighter. Yeah, I don't like it curly. Right. Well, but have you ever shaved... Have you sh- shaved your head? No. No. Well, no. you will when you go to Turkey, but you'll see it then, I guess. mm I'd like to see you with straighter hair. I used to straighten it all the time. <laughs> yes, you did. When I met you, I used to straighten yes, it. Yes, it's now coming back to me. Yeah, I used to have straight. Oh, hair. please do. Look, I brought my ironing system in this week. Do you not remember when I got burgled in Manchester or on nights when I lived with Hattie and Daryl? Mm. And a, a burglar come through me bedroom window window because I was on the ground floor. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was Daryl trying to get in. I was on nights, weren't I? I was working overnights on Five Live. And I, it was a burglar. <laughs> you know, remember, I threw my straighteners at him. <laughs> Just very much. But they were plugged in, so they came back. Oh, get it... out! <laughs> but they came back and hit me and Ed. <laughs> I thought I told you that. <laughs> so I had my straighteners, went, threw them at him, and it come back and hit me on Ed. Wow. Yeah. They weren't on. No, no. But yeah. Did, did he then leave? Yeah. Because he didn't expect you to be there, no. presumably. He knocked on the door. But well, I was a light burglar. Yeah. Remember that? Wow. Uh, did the Hogwarts Legacy update, I'm really stuck on defeating Ranrock Dragon. <laughs> to the point where I was playing it on the sofa last night. And, uh, yeah, I, I was screaming and I got very cross. And you wonder why you're a bit behind on your book. Not just only a bit. It was in the evening. How do you have time to... Iron for six hours a week. I don't I, on you a have thousand pound iron in context. Write a book, do everything else, and play. I, I'm lucky if I get an hour and a half's worth of telly at night. By the time I get in, get in at seven, have my tea, watch telly for. Yeah, but I don't have ADHD. What do you mean? I don't have ADHD. Well, not officially. No, unofficially you do. Why would that make me ADHD? Because I, I don't know, because you, you, I can imagine. I, look, I haven't yet. We haven't yet done the Fly on the Wall documentary about when Jordan North gets home. We have to put the cameras up in mm. all those rooms to, to do that. But when we do, I would imagine you're going to get home and you, you'll faff. You'll find something. Yeah. yeah. You, you'll yeah, faff, so right. you'll scroll on your phone. Well, it takes me, you know, when I get to bed, it takes me a good 40 30 minutes on a good night, 40 minutes to like go downstairs, do all the cushions. Make sure and you've got a lot of scatter cushions. Make sure. Oh, you liked cushions. your card? Yeah, you did. Yes. You got me a card. I got you a passive aggressive card, birthday card about scatter cushions. And what did it say on it? Uh, oh, I can't remember. The well, punchline was like, you get excited now no, about scatter was, cushions. Yeah. So I go down and wipe my sides down, buff everything up. So yeah, you're probably right there. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's I wouldn't say wiping down and doing your scatter cushions is ADHD. That is just yeah. But sifting home. kitchen sink at twelve o'clock at night not normal. We're Mister Scrubber, is it? Not is that normal. your grinder name? <laughs> what, <laughs> Mister Scrubber? No, the those little oh Scrub Daddy. Yeah, Scrub yeah. Daddy. That's my grinder name. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got one of them? I've had one, yeah. No, you, honestly, G and Divas, you've got to try a scrub daddy. If you're, if, you're, if you're into that sort of thing, get a scrub daddy. 
This is from Anonymous. Hi, William and Jordan. I was listening to the episode with the Pringle regurgitation and I decided to relay the story to my colleagues. It got us onto the subject of the perfect pot noodle, which brought up various options. One colleague eats the chicken and mushroom dust before the water goes in. My other colleague cooks hers in the microwave so it has a thick consistency. One colleague eats their noodles crunchy and sucks out the last bit of soy sauce from the packet. I squeeze the pot so the water goes to the bottom and cooks all the noodles upwards. That's how I do it. Please settle a debate on how the perfect pot noodle should be cooked and eaten. Kind regards, Anonymous. Follow the instructions, uh, which I used to often boast about how I knew them off by art. Because obviously I grew up eating. And you boasted about yeah, it. Yeah, like, which says a lot about my childhood. This was in a world before Three Star Michelin restaurants. So it was like, peel back the lid... And then it was like, boil the kettle, and you, you pour the water up to the line. Oh, God, how can I still remember this? Then you let it um, brew, I suppose, for two minutes. Brew. But you squeeze the, the pot noodle. Packet. Packet, so it goes to the bottom. Then you stir it well. Mm. Yes, let it stand for another two minutes, and you squeeze the sauce in. Wow. Have you ever had a pot noodle? You Obstate. forced a Bombay bad boy down my throat on tour. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> I haven't. We still need to pay him. <laughs> <laughs> um, this next one is from Nathaniel Ford, FRSA. What's yeah. that mean? Fellow of the Royal Society of Arts. Oh, really? I know that because you, I am one. Are you a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts? I am indeed. And how would you be a fellow of the Royal Society oh, of Arts? Don't you worry about it. Greetings, William and Jordan. A while back, you mentioned that William doesn't have a Wikipedia page and that when someone tried to make one about you, it was removed. I have been involved in Wikipedia for over 15 years. I need a life his words, and looked into your Wikipedia page being deleted, William. If you thought there was a conspiracy, you are kind of on the money. I see. However, Wikipedia generally doesn't like uh, primary sources or references from blacklisted news sites. But I have some good news. <gasps> oh, wow. Your Wikipedia article is now live. I've managed to get your page up and running with the focus on you being an author. You do. You should have a Wikipedia page. I had one for years yeah. and then it got deleted. I told you you should have had one. Yours, uh, I, Nathaniel Ford. I'm going to look at William... Oh, and he's put a bit here about the career, my career section. Wow. Oh, William Hansen, author. About sexted. Oh, there's two. There's William Hansen. There's two. Oh, Bill Hansen. Oh, you'd be a great Bill. No. Oh, I've never thought. Bill was short for William, innit? Yes. All right. William Richard Henry Hansen, FRSA. Born September uh, 1989. A British etiquette coach, author and host of Help I Sex and My Posse. Boss. And keeping up appearances as a luxury podcast. He's currently the executive director and owner of the English Manager. Manor. Manor and, and etiquette and protocol. Oh, <laughs> no mention of me on here. I'm sure there is. Personal life. Well, you're not going to be under personal life, are you? In November 2019, he was a visiting lecturer at Georgetown University in Qatar. Yes. Teaching etiquette on behalf of the BBC. What? Yep. No, well, that's not true. On the 20th of March 2018, bloody hell. How many years will that be now? Oh, my word. We're nearly coming up to six years. Six years. Uh, with co-host Jordan North. There the we go. Your podcast mention. Help I Sex With My B Boss began. It has since released 441 episodes in Apple Podcasts as of the 6th of February 2024. Gosh. The signature cocktail, The Queen Mother, consisting of gin and the bonnet, is popularised by the podcast, result in a nationwide shortage following the death of Queen Elizabeth II in September 22. Golly. Well, I'm delighted to be back. Thank you, Nathaniel Ford. I think Ford. you do need a Wikipedia page. Yes, I mean, there are a couple of things that are inaccurate on that, but that's fine. It's Wikipedia for you. Great. Um, thank you very much. That's lovely. I'm very touched, Nathaniel. That's marvellous. Hi, William and Jordan. I was listening to you talking about festivals. My friends and I went to a festival called Secret Garden Party in 2017 and can absolutely attest that people meander around at 3am shouting, butt scratcher. Thank you. Another random festival call that's been going around... Uh, recently is people randomly shouting Alan. Yeah, I said that the other week, didn't I? That is, isn't that from, oh, there was a, like an animal program. Yeah. No, yeah. it's... Or is it, no, it's um, Alan Partridge, isn't no, it? No, it's, it's. I think it's a meerkat and it pops says, yes. it goes, Alan, 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 Alan. 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 Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, one of the friends in our camping party is actually called Alan, so I took great joy in starting various chants of his names at any point throughout the festival. Literally just saying his name loud enough in conversation would start off a chant and people would immediately join in. It all felt very surreal and harmonious to bond with strangers over a mutual love of my friend's husband's name, except to Alan, who hated it. Love the podcast, keep up the good work, lots of love, Polly. I started one as well. Mm. I dropped the screw in the tuna. I dropped the screw... In the tuna. Well, the time must have I flown by. I dropped the screw in the tuna. You never watched Keenan and Cal? No. Well, yes, but I can't and remember that. And then somebody else would go, who loves orange yes, soda? Yes, I remember that bit. Cal loves orange soda. Is it true? Hmm. I do, I do, I do. But what is a tuna? Well, it's tuna, isn't it? But they say tuna. What's it? But I still don't know. What is it, piano? No, so he, he tried to sue a tuna company. Keenan tried to sue a, a tuna company because there was a screw in it, but then they went to court and they calculated. It's, I'm sorry. No, I don't need to see no, this right now. No, it's the best. We'll do it when we go for breakfast you should, after oh, this. That, it lovely. is the best scene. He bursts through the courtroom doors and he's like, Aah! it's It's a beautiful performance. I don't think that is as catchy as Alan or um, Butt Scratcher. And I never thought I'd say that. Do, I don't, no, no, please. Let's not no, waste time. Just, I know. But he comes marching in. <sighs> what? <laughs> and did people at festivals know what you were referring to? <laughs> oh, it goes on, doesn't it? Why don't you do a Keenan and Kel podcast? Oh my God, that's a great idea. Because there was rumours that they died and it was all bollocks, didn't it? Yeah. Anyway, carry on. Where were we? It's me ADHD. So. Yes, <laughs> you're undiagnosed. Have to watch that clip. Oh, they were great. They were. I enjoyed them when I was 12. What was the name of the store? Oh, I can't remember. Rigby's. Okay. Uh, this is from Peter A. Reinhardt Jr. I'm guessing he's American. Dear Mr. Hansen, I'm... Car oh, you can get yourself off. I'm currently listening to your episode entitled Help, There's Sparkle on My Stomach. And I'm deeply, deeply curious about your sweater or jumper. It's a lovely shade of pink of which I've been looking for for some time. Could you please share what store you found such a delightful article of clothing? I appreciate your time, kind sir, and look forward to your response. Most sincerely, Peter A. Reinhardt Jr. Yeah, Was that a, lot a couple of, of weeks ago? Yeah, so when we did the sprinkle, sparkle, spunk um, <laughs> bit, it still makes you laugh. A lot of people commenting about your lovely pink. Yes. Uh, I'm going to wear that tomorrow, actually. Where do you, was it the women's section of the M&S? Where you got it from? <laughs> no, it was from Arquette, for those that want to uh, know. You went to Arquette? Well, I'll tell you what. So I was given an Arquette jumper by somebody for Christmas, and it, it was uh, the wrong size. It was too big, actually, which is nice. So I went to take it back to see if I could exchange it, and they didn't have the size I needed. But they said I could exchange it for something else in the store, and I found that jumper. Okay. I never thought this is oh. for Marquette. This is jacket. it? Yeah. The Maleficent look. Mm. It's also how a Mancunian mother would call in her son, who was called Ket. <laughs> ah, Ket. Ah, Ket. Nice. Mm. Lovely. Uh, this last one is from Mark, who's a loyal listener in Buckeye, Arizona. Get away. That's not a place. Oh, yeah, they've got some weird names. Yeehaw, Buckeye. Hello, boys. I enjoyed hearing William's etymology regarding the origins of dildos. It sparked a memory from a book I read some time ago, the name of which I can't recall. The subject was the origins and legends of witches in Britain. Mm, Pendle witches. During the period when King James was obsessed with witches, much was written about how to identify and find them. Supposedly, witches could brew up a potion that induced ecstasy. They would put it on the handle of their broom and then use their broom handle as a dildo. This was known as riding the broom. This is where the idea that witches ride brooms originated. Cheers, Mark, a loyal listener. I, I mean, we we could get that checked to see if it's factually correct, but we haven't got time. Yeah. So we'll probably just leave on that one. I will, though, check that. Well, yeah. Just to check. Riding the broom. Riding the broom. Didn't, isn't there a witch in Macbeth that has a dildo? I'm sorry. I Have you seen a niche version on the internet? No, I read Mac... Right, two things here. I read Macbeth. You read Macbeth? In GCSE English. Okay. Okay, because we had to do Shakespeare. And then we watched the 70s film of it. And I think... Don't quote me on this, but a young Keith Chegwin's in the film. <laughs> Naked. Wow. It's either Cheggers 
or your man from Family Fortunes? Les Dennis. It's one of them. Right, I'm not making this up. And I know you're <laughs> thinking your ADHD is off it today, but I'm telling you, right? There's, and I think in that, a witch lifts up a skirt and she's got like a dildo. She goes, Are you yeah. sure this was Macbeth? Yeah, I promise you. Did anybody else watch the 1970s version of Macbeth? Well, we'll put it out there. So I think she had a dildo in that. Like a rubber willy. Right, well... Thank you to Mark, thank you to William Shakespeare and to Jordan for all of that dildo chat. Please get back in touch if you've also seen that film. It's a really good film. Mm. Macbeth. If you've got a question or a story that isn't a dilemma or problem, this is the place where we can read it out. So drop into our DMs on social media or send us an email to help at sexofmyboss.com with anything you want to share with us. What? What? I need medicated. I know. Double, double, toil and bubble. Oh, it slipped up my minge. What the hell Dildo. was that? Hit me laugh. We also love hearing back from the people who we offer advice to, so if that's you, do get back in touch with us. For more sex of news and nonsense, sign up for our newsletter via sexandmyboss.com. We'll see you on Tuesday for our Tuesday episode. Bye. Bye.